Hey everyone, and welcome to day two of the Alienware Arena Tournament. A lot of money is on the line here. We saw a great matchup or series of matchups yesterday. Some teams expected to win, some teams not expected to win, and we had yeah. a couple upsets as well. But going into game, uh, day two, there's a lot of great matchups to see. That's right. Thanks to Alienware, we're hosting a two-week arena event, which housed originally 42 teams spanning two continents and some of the biggest names in esports. Team Solo Mid and Team Coast from Europe will be fighting their way through round three of today's event. Uh, Team Dignitas, hot off their win against the uh, arena favorites, Rage, will face off against Cognitive Gaming, who were able to be, uh, best flex yesterday. There are still 16 teams remaining today, and half of those teams are going home. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a long match today. Be a brief reminder today, uh, it's going to be three best of threes with the round of 16 today. We're going to be watching a couple great matches, first of which, as you already saw on the screen, I-5 versus Superbia, the first one we're watching today. And also another reminder, we actually have some great giveaways uh, going out right now. It's going to be a pro series. It's going to be the pro session sweeps. We'll put a link for, for that in chat for you. But basically, you have an opportunity to get a two-hour teaching session with one of the pros list, are listed on the screen there, it's a great opportunity. That's right. I mean, the players that are listed in this, some of them are considered the best players in the world in their respective fields. If you win this, you could actually become a very strong Smite player. And, of course, thanks to Alienware. Oh, yeah, Alienware, a great sponsor. So we're going to be hopping into the game shortly here. It's going to be I-5 versus Superbia, as previously mentioned. Now, any predictions going into this? Well, I mean, I-5 has some pretty veteran teamwork, but Superbia have shown up over the past couple months. Uh, not to mention, I think they're a little bit more familiar uh, with Arena than I-5, though it should be considered that Rage, probably the most familiar team in the entire world with Arena, uh, still managed to fall to Team Dignitas yesterday. Um, in, that, in my opinion, even though that Team Dignitas kind of housed their way into second best team in the world of the launch tournament, I still consider that an upset. Yeah, I know the biggest thing about Arena is it's a different animal. It's something that you really have to kind of separate away from the Conquest game mode. Really, any other game mode in Smite, everything is different there. The kills are important, but there's phases to the game. Just like there's phases to Conquest, you have initial uh, push for the side buff minions. You have the push for the minions as well. And getting last hits is also important. You want to have a pusher on your team so that they're always clearing the last hits on the minions. If you don't get the last hit on your team, then you won't have credit for it. You won't be losing tickets on the other side. And of course, the last 10 tickets are also so, so very valuable. Two kills or, of course, 10 big minions make a big difference there. So we're hopping to the picks and bands on screen. You'll be seeing that right now. So far, not all that surprising, except for, we're just going to see Bastet first, and honestly, I think Bastet's great across all game modes. I think she is phenomenal. She's super fast. She's hard to catch in terms of, even if she's in the team fight, she does a ton of AoE damage, and while the cats aren't going to be super powerful in this game mode, they can still do a good amount of damage. They can slow prevent people from getting into the base, so good ban there. Still a getting banned out, obviously, one of the top picks currently. Zeus, and of course, Freya is going to be grabbed out as well. Over on the left side, we're going to see Odin hovered on and picked there. And then the right side, Tyr, a character which has a ton of control. And Athena, a character in Arena, I guess, made famous by Swollen 8, uh, RIP, as he was knocked out of the tournament yesterday. Um, I think, don't correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm pretty sure Swollen 8, uh, the inventor of the Mage Athena in Arena, was the first and only player in Diamond in the first season Diamond was available for Arena. You know, I actually didn't follow that, but it's possible. Yeah, he has been a big proponent for since the dawn of Arena itself, and so a lot of practice there. So Tier and Athena locked in, as you can see on the screen, back over left side to see what they want to go with. Now, one thing that we haven't seen too much of uh, is Shibalanke. Now, it's surprising to see Scylla banned out here. Uh, now, Scylla can do a lot of things in Arena. Of course, with I'm a Monster, you can continually get hit after hit after hit, getting as we saw you yesterday. Know, tons of kills. That's right. That almost Penta, what a huge break that could have been. Poseidon also making his way into Arena a lot here. So the first three picks on the left side of your screen oh my for God, Superbia, Uller. very strong. We forgot about Uller. Who's he again? <laughs> I don't think anyone's asking that question anymore. <laughs> he is a staple. And while maybe not the best in Arena, especially compared to Shibalanke, who has some of the highest damage in the game, I mean, the passive stacks up, you have a very early branching bowl is maxed, the boxing potential in Shibalanke is huge, but Uller has a 1.8 second stun at level 9. Guaranteed. Uh, Chalk, a lot of damage. They have a lot of physical over on the right side, which is surprising, whereas left side, uh, we're seeing 
uh, kind of a good mix. We do have the Bacchus and the Poseidon, Sun Wukong as well. Right side, one pick remaining. It's got to be a mage. Al Kwong's still on the table. Yeah, back over to the left side, Superbia, Bacchus, and Sun Wukong to round it out. They actually have some strong combo potential here. Odin Spears with Poseidon Ultimate. Yeah, the Shiblank Ultimate to buy some time, get some distance. Bacchus, Sun Wukong, great interference in between to kind of run that gap. It's really, really big. So waiting for I-5 to pick their last character. They need someone to bring it home. They have Tyr, Athena, Ur, and Chalk all in one team, but they that? need someone to bring it home. Gazo Ur. Gazuntite. Ur. Ur. It's going to be Agni. So Agni, the last pick here oh for I-5. He doesn't get too much play in Arena, but he can do a lot of work if he can get that farm up. So look to see if Lloydie on Agni can get a lot of farm early on and start getting that penetration. Normally, we're going to see Agni build into a lot of penetration, a lot of damage. In Arena, generally, we see Agni switch that to CDR. He wants to have as many of those bombs as possible at any given time. Uh, a 12-second cooldown versus a 20-second cooldown, that's a big deal when you're constantly having to throw those things out. So that's big, especially when you couple it with a character like Uller, who can just throw the damage out as fast as possible. I mean, we have the Axe Toss, then into Bladed Arrow, and then, of course, the Volley, which both have super amounts of range. They're, that's going to help the clear, considering right now... It, actually, this is strange, because normally we're so reliant on mages to have the clear, and it seems on this team they're going to rely on Thunderstrike and Bladed Arrow to get that done. Yeah, and there's so much that Ur can do early on. He can, you know, like you said, harassment, lane clear, also jumping in with that stun. It makes a big difference in the start of the team fight as well. Uh, but not only that, he has the late game scaling, right? Invigorate, uh, he's got a lot of control with that, can move himself around a lot more often. Uh, but he also has exposed weakness, getting extra damage, combine that with the passive wield bow, gives him more attack speed. I mean, he just has so much going for him. It makes other hunters jealous. And we'll see what he can do in the start of this matchup. But we're going to be cutting to a brief break and coming in to the first round. Now, keep in mind, this is a best of three. So best of three arena is a little bit more different than uh, best of three conquest because the picks are huge. The bands are huge. And then you go into it in the last few, like the hundred tickets that end the game can make all the difference. So we'll be right back with the first round matchup here. Best of three. We'll see you soon. Welcome back, everybody. The first round of the first matchup today, Superbia versus I-5, has taken place. They are in this and getting ready to go. Left side of the map, Ooh. you can see Athena already going over to put a ward down on the buffs. a ward in Arena? Maybe, maybe they're trying to steal it away. Beauty, I love it. You can see on the left side, um, they're grouping up here. They're going to probably do the double pull here. You'll notice they're kind of standing in between the two camps. When a timer hits zero and they spawn, they're going to want to pull them into a central area and AoE them down. Things like the Jingu Bang, Gungnir's Might, the Whirlpool, all going to be used. Watch the grouping up here. It's a beautiful play and make sure they maximize their damage. It looks like on the other side, we're seeing a very similar thing uh, coming out from I-5. So both teams should be getting to the mid lane at about the same time. This is a great shift from the normal we saw in the beginning of Arena where teams would do one, two, three, and have one person run over to the minion wave and clear it out and have a four-man clear of the buffs. And now instead, as long as you're maximizing your AoE, you're able to get there in full, as you can see. A little bit late is I-5. They're going to clear it out just in case here. 493 to 494. It looks like I-5 actually missed a last hit on one of those minions, so a little bit behind. They're going to come back here and do blue buff after the fact. That actually helped them clear the wave a little faster. It did, but now they're going to be pushed onto their heels here as you see it working back, but thank God they have Poseidon using that Whirlpool to get almost every last hit instantaneously. Right. One remains, and it looks like it's going to be in favor. Yeah, so far they're doing good. Yeah, like we mentioned in the picking stage, you always want to have at least one pusher on your team for Arena because the minions are so vital to your success in this game mode. And so, you know, teams will pick Al Guang, they'll pick Poseidon, they'll pick characters that are so good at soloing the entire wave so you never have to worry about minions going into the portal. So when this game mode originally came out, it was kind of branded as Deathmatch. But because, you know, how campy Deathmatch could be, they decided, hey, let's put these minions in to make sure there's a, a forcible soft enrage timer for each team. At the same time, you'll notice a lot of the top arena teams focus much less on kills and much more on minion control, buff control, and ensuring that if a team fight does start, they're still going to maintain their presence with minions. And that's a really big deal. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, six points per minion, then five points for a kill. If it's even got a three charge, like detonate right title, or I'm sorry, three charge taunt on top of there for Superbia. Pulled back into danger, but no fall for I-5. There's a blink, fearless, B to activate immediately. Curse you not wanting to get caught up there, uh, backing off completely. Waiting for that first initiation, but everyone is level five. 
They're having a hard time here. Three points down right now is the red team. They're just trying to control as much as possible. You can see C's uh, moving up there looking for something. Bacchus is a character that I absolutely love. I think is secretly one of the strongest characters in the game. I mean, we. I, I think almost everyone has seen the, the video of Shing. Have you seen it, Dry Bear? <laughs> the two shot on Jervy? I mean, oh, man. It's, it's a rough life. Well, it's similar to come with Karna, the fact that just very highly mobile, but also has the fact that they can do a lot of damage. You'll see characters like Kumba and Karna or Bacchus go for boots early on, magic boots, whether it be Shoes of Focus or even Magi for the penetration. Early on, they do so much damage. You have the Belge, you have the Belly Flop, and then follow up with the Intoxicate. He can do a lot, but we're not really giving enough credit to I-5 here with the amount of damage they can deal as well, Chalk getting in close. And, but they're going to be relying a lot on Ur as well as Agni to get the damage done. Uh, so right here, they're finally moving in. Here comes the darkness of the night. Curse you, baits out the team here. But we do have a Lawbringer in the background. Fearless One's going to hit. Power Cleave's going to wow. find first blood. But it's not done yet. Crack comes out there, getting the kill on Adver, looking for a ball. The Path of Flames go through. Damage over time is going through here. Dirge just pops each game to avoid the Sunder Kong. Ultimate might be enough. One more shot. Good taunt to slow him down just a bit. Jingu Bang gets the kill. Loading the backside, just buying some time for his team here, clearing out the minions. I like the focus here, and I think this is one of the biggest things about Arena, where teams are new, is they tend to stick too long to the fight when the respawns are so fast and end up getting caught up. That's right. I mean, you also see some people building meditation, even though the base is right there. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it right there. Don't oh, do man, it. It hurts. It hurts. Don't do, don't do it. <laughs> but we are seeing a lot of sprints come out. Uh, of course, a lot of purification beads as well. With team fights as often as they are, Aegis kind of takes a back seat because of the longer cooldown. Purification beads not only gives you uh, that CC immunity and the CC break, but of course the five second reduction on your current cooldowns, which in a team fight, as, as fast and as mobile as these might be, an extra Path of Flames or an extra Thunderstrike might mean the difference between life and death. You know, I'm, I'm surprised to see more sprints on Superbia than I-5. Looking at Superbia's lineup, four out of the five players have slows, and that slow mini would be huge. Double taunt here, Odin dropping low, jumps away. Zenoko is still alive, and a blink, fearless as he lands, might be enough, that double flame wave. Gosh, he goes down, as well as Vekin. Gonna go drop down, then Adver going into the well, using that damage immunity, but it's not 100% anymore, so he is not perfectly safe. Poseidon waiting in the wings, looking to follow up here, but that was a beautiful initiation by I-5, and I like Tears moves. No, I like the aggression coming out from I-5 because if they're allowed to push forth, the, Bacchus is just going to get in there, land the Intoxicate onto three to four people, and the team fight's going to become a mess. Look what the Intoxicate did there. It ensured that the person was slowed enough and drunk enough that they couldn't even get the Defender of Olympus to land properly. Right there, it saved his life, but we got to see more aggression coming out or they're just going to get handled on Superbia. You know, there's a pretty specific combo here that I'm not seeing Superbia leverage a lot. It's Shibalanke and Bacchus throwing that Intoxicate down and forcing them to move. For those yes. of you who don't know, while you're in the drunk state for Bacchus' ultimate, you are forced to move. You cannot stop moving. You can't even back. And the thing is, Shibalanke's ultimate, Darkest of Nice, if you're moving at the end of it, you will be stunned. So you can force three, four, five people to get stunned immediately. Gashi in trouble. Oh, Play away, burst damage. Odin jumps away, but Fearless comes out immediately. Tier finds it. Man, that's an Odin that they just burned down that quickly. One of the tankiest characters in the game inherently. And you can see he's already starting up Cloak. He has Mark of the Vanguard. He's building at least somewhat for protections, and they were able to do that amount of damage. The power of Uller, the power of Tyr. You know, we have the Thunder Strikes and the Rain Fires coming down. You can't let them control the map. And even though they're not doing great on the minion waves right now, you can see they do lead by three kills, but still only four points, which means Superbia is keeping themselves in the game with just proper arena meta. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. It's something that a lot of teams don't really understand. Odin trapping them in here, looking for something. There goes the, uh, the glory bound from Uda. The burst damage from Kraken's gonna finish off Loidy. There goes a great silence, looking for a purification beats, pulls him out of it. Taunt comes through, not gonna get him. The purification beats lasted long enough. Shibalanki actually picked up tier three beads. I love this. If he didn't pick that up, he would have died there. I'm actually super surprised to not see any shielded teleports coming out, or rather, uh, protected recall. Protected recall will actually just get you out of the Odin cage and back to the base. Granted, it is a two-minute cooldown. It used to be one minute. It was incredibly overpowered in Arena, but still can be very, very strong. Uh, right there, you saw them commit very hard to go for that kill. We saw a Kraken. We saw the belly flop with the Whirlpool and, of course, the Ring of Spears. So two ultimates used to get one kill might not be the best choice of action if I-5 decides to go in here. But if they don't, that could be a big win for Superbia, who now actually lead the fight once again. 
I like the fact that Funky Flockus on a Poseidon picked up the Gem of Isolation first. This yeah. is something kind of like a, a build of old, where it doesn't really get picked up as much. People favor damage over everything else, but in this 5 versus 5 all team fight setting, that slow on the Whirlpool is so important. Now, technically, the Whirlpool doesn't have an inherent slow. It's pulling you towards the center. Everyone is always trying to walk away from the center. No one is silly enough to go towards the center of the Whirlpool. So it does slow your movement speed by way of subtraction, but not necessarily a slow. Putting the, the Gem of Isolation on it adds the slow to the, the movement speed subtraction. A huge combination allows you to combo so much, especially with that, that cripple that's in there. Tear's going to be hurt by it. Uller, Odin jumping in here, but in response, Tear's going to the backside, not going to buy it. Kraken comes out on top. Avro's going to drop down in the backside as the fight continues. The Purby of really showing their colors here, but there's the Lawbringer Purification Beads used on Curse. You just trying oh. to get out of there, and the Rising Jaguar will push them away, but Zergius' cooldown has been used on Defender of Olympus, and that's going to be a slight win there in favor of Superbia, who still managed to push the wave out safe. That crip on the Whirlpool actually slowed down tier long enough for Shivalanka to get out on the backside. That was a huge win there. Of course, can't use Fearless from either stance, whether it be Assault or Guard stance. Uh, looks like Sanantri or Sanantri on Ur here is going to be picking up Rage first for those crits. Uh, we're also going to see a lot of Hide of the Urchins. So Sovereignties are completed here for both Durgius as well as the Crossway on Bacchus played by C. So a big pick up there. You got to get Sovereignty fast in Arena. Oh, absolutely. Um, with that picked up, that's going to give his team a major amount of tankiness. Actually, both teams are rocking it right now. And, of course, we're seeing the ever-present height of the urchin. Uh, right now, uh, Ninja Demi is doing a good job of getting that thing stacked up as fast as possible. You see him 3-0-2 right now, some of which, of course, was earned in the beginning of the fight, and that will not go towards that. But now you can see him working on the heavy mace, which will eventually turn into Jotun's Wrath, ensuring that he has even more cooldowns. We're talking about more Fearlesses, more Power Cleaves, and more amazing amounts of damage coming out from Lawbringer, which looks to be like uh, the leveling point here. He is not opting for uh, change stance. Yeah, kind of getting as much damage as he possibly can now. When Tier first came out, everyone was leveling the Fearless first because it is the most amount of single target damage you're looking at a single ability. But putting points into the Power Cleave reduces the cooldown enough for you to do a lot more damage over time. Plus, it also increases the heal and guard stance. So there's a toss up there. But, you know, looking for the extra little damage bits there. Sinantri coming on the left side. I love this. Looking for something. Just zoning him out here now. He could get. And he's, in, he's wielding axes right now. So there goes the stun coming out here. Not going to find it. Does have Bladed Arrow, but he's zoning out completely. I don't know why he's just going. For. There's a Whirlpool. There's a Tidal Surge. Damage in the mid lane as well. Looking for Sun Wukong. Not going to find it. Uh, delayed it long enough, but Poseidon ended up getting it. Yeah, he didn't quite keep him out of there for long enough. The Whirlpool was good. Kept him grounded. Uh, but right now, it looks like the Creeping Curse is going to come out. Dergius is going to be forced to move back. Whirlpool and Jingo Bang both used on a very tanky Athena. He barely has any damage to show for that. Blink in. Going to catch three. Jump out. Jump out. But... Agni is in a ton of trouble. He's going to go down there in the backside. Kraken's used. Look at the damage. Poseidon goes down there. Athena ultimate coming down on top. Looking for Zeno He pops Soldier. He's up on the cloud. Looking for the dunk, but now he's far behind. He has no mana. Movement speed buff will give him some distance as Bacchus flies in majestically. But I-5 has already retreated here again. I love the commitment to disengaging early. You're fighting on their spawn, and as everyone knows, if you know tactics, you never want to fight on the defender's advantage when they're that close to home base. Get out, get the kills, and get done with it. Ulan are actually very close up here. Sinatra, a lot of trouble. Damage up, but coming through. Purification beats, not enough. The chin size did work, but Glory Bound will take him out of danger there as Tears getting jumped on. Could this be a kill? Oh man, he look at the health. You see him running here. He doesn't quite have an escape, it looks like. He's stunned out. He's dodging title surge. Not enough, but Odin with that final hit in the back. Finally gonna get him down. Uh, that what looked like to be a one for one trade in the overall actually turned up two for one in favor of Superbia, who is starting to really push themselves ahead. They're 12 ahead right now with an entire wave in front of them of points. You know, Sinantri there actually had a very interesting initiation. Got to force the force the hand of Tyr to get in deep and ended up disengaging himself. And so, you know, when you run the line that close in Arena, it's it's not going to go your way. You have to be really careful on when you decide to engage. And you, you know, when you're playing Arena, you're, you're not playing for glory. You're not playing for your name. You're not playing for, you know, fame. You're playing for the tickets. The tickets is all you need to focus on. And so when he's going in on those kills or forcing fights, it's just not good for the team. And you can see that Superbia taking the lead. That's right, 18.
tickets in their favor with a tie game and kills. That's showing, you know, they're really playing the meta just a lot better than I-5 right now. And while they're doing a good job with the pushing, each wave is getting traded out. They're not looking for much, but a blink in on Tabakas, Fearless Power Cleave, Rain Fire, not going to be enough. Seas barely taking damage, and a lot of the utility and control of I-5 was used in the process. Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful about the, your, the durations of those uh, cooldowns and not, not use them as frivolously as you can, but certainly pushing the envelope is really important uh, for any team in Arena here. So we're going to see them kind of clear the wave out. Last hits are very important. And we saw this earlier, DM, the fact that, you know, even though you're losing kills, if you're focusing on minions and always getting last hits, you will keep up in the tickets. Full wave is six tickets. Uh, single kill is five. And so as long as you're focusing on that, now keep in mind, if your team doesn't get last hit credit, if minions are killing other minions, you won't get those ticket loss. Right. On the other side. So I want to be very, very specific on when you go for the waves. The waves almost always take precedence, especially at the end of the game. All right, looks like at the 12 minute mark, we're about 12.30 right now. You're going to see the buffs starting to respawn. The red on the right side blinking. Speed's already up. Left side, red and blue, uh, rather, rather red and speed are about to spawn. You see blinking as the team fight begins here. Uh, all of the tanks kind of rotating in. Fearless actually getting looked for. He doesn't find it as they chase down a shock. Probably not the best idea here. Defender of Olympus reigns down. Tort to give himself some tankiness, and the Kraken will go off. They finally will find Shock after three ultimates, but will it be enough to turn the team fight? Jumping in tier, looking for again to find a heavily agility by his time. Bacchus makes it to the well as he's ticking down slowly. Lodi getting low here. Sun Kong deciding if he wants to go in. Title Surge while she forced the tier to get some distance there on that Fearless. So surprising combination there. Now they committed really hard, but the biggest thing for I-5 right now is that Everyone's so tanky. You have Chalk, Tyr, Athena, even Agni High Mobility, who actually has picked up a rod now. So he's able to get in and get out a lot more quickly. He needs some CDR, start using those dashes more often. But he has Purification Beats 3. He has the Combat Blink 3. And I love the fact that I-5 is buying actives and finishing them early. you got to get the biggest out of those. It's a short game. No, I love Heavenly Agility. Anyone who watches my streams or listens to my casting will tell you I think it is one of the, if not the strongest item in the game currently. It is a huge 40% speed buff for the entire team with slow immunity, not to mention increasing healing. Uh, it's it's just a very, very strong active, and that's allowing his team to get in and out of fights. I mean, had he used it a little bit earlier in the last fight, they might have been able to find some extra damage, but right now, Lloydie almost going down, gonna find him, curse you, with the darts in the back, blinking through, they're gonna find another kill. Oh, man, this, the, the team fights are just unbelievable today. Both teams are just incredibly smart about where they're using their abilities. Look at Ninja right now, just dodging in and oh. out. He's been in this fight forever. Oh! Right in the back, Jingle Bang gets him as he runs away there. It was a beautiful play by Ninja, but just didn't have the HP to pull it off there. So it gets the kill on the back end. Sun Kong is going to walk away with that one. The ticket difference is huge. I know 14 tickets separate these two teams. It's a really, really big gap for Suburbia. And they got to feel confident about it. But, you know, it, it does come down to that last 100 ticket swing. Uh, you know, it comes down to the kills. I've seen teams who try to go for the kill and finish it off with three tickets left, end up dying and losing the game. Arena is just so fickle when it comes down to the end. You really have to play it very, very specific by the book as the tickets go down because anything can happen. So in the past couple months, Dry, we, we've always talked about how great Sun Wukong is. I think in the next two months, if he doesn't get changed, he is going to be top pick, top ban potential. Check out the damage right now. He is currently sitting top damage right now at 12,000. And you know what that is? That's Magic Cudgel. Over and over and over. With the build, you can see Jotun's Wrath build there for CDR. He's just smacking those Jingu Bangs down onto the ground repeatedly. Fearless gonna miss. This Ninja Team is not in a great spot here, but Lawbringer will get him out just barely, and they're not gonna be able to lay chase to that one. I think that starting to prime her ultimate cancels it in the fact to make sure that tier is safe. Whirlpool on the ground. Sprint activation is now on cooldown for Chalk. There's a Thunderstrike to go some harassment. Taunt only on Poseidon. There's a shield while Purification Beats forced there on Poseidon, forcing his hand. Cinder Kong dunking from above. They're just so tanky right now. They need to look for Agni, but he's the only one they can kill, and he's so mobile. There's the weakening curse dropping the backside. Kraken hitting Sinatra. That dunk from above. Ur is still chasing away, getting back to his base. They can't get the kill here as he pops Sprint as well as his Invigorate for the movement speed, Ur is just so, so versatile. 
not to mention it's on Sanentry, a player that we talk about a lot, especially in the European tournaments. He has been an incredible force for I-5 and some other teams actually in the past, I'd say six months or so, he has really, I guess, earned his fame in the community. If you find this guy in ranked, it's really your best bet to not go anywhere near him because he has some of the best movement in the entire world. As we're seeing, I mean, take a look right now. He's 206. He has not died, and he's playing one of the squishiest characters in the game. Now, is that Sinatra or is that Ur? <laughs> Maybe a mix of both. Okay. Todd coming out there <laughs> looking for it. Fearless coming out on top of Poseidon, forcing him into the uh, Griffin area there. Actually, they're not Griffins anymore, are they? No, they're like angels. They're like angels. They're yeah, super angels. Give them a different name so everyone knows. What should we call them? Um, I, I, that's on you, man. Do, do dinner, you dinner rolls. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to take it back. No longer your decision. <laughs> But, all right, so we got another team fight there. We saw the Confound come out. Not too much went down. People are kind of inching towards level 20. We're seeing a lot, of, a lot of 18s, a few 19s scattered about as well. And the teams are still about, it looks like, 16 tickets apart, which is a pretty close game at this point. Remember, guys, when we get under the 10 ticket mark, the minions, the small minions are no longer worth points on last hit. Only the big minions and player kills. Actually, have we seen any siege minions yet? We have not! Not a single one is so real? far. Not a minutes? single one. This has just been team fight after team fight after team fight. It's been but such a dying. long ride. That's right. It's very safe. You can see that you know I five is playing a little passive. They're also very tanky. Uh, Superbi wants the kills, but they just can't get it. Looking for a box, it's not going to find it. Uh, slow coming out from own. But just look at the dirt, like the HP from I five. You've got a shifter shield. You got hide of the urchin on two of the players. You got sovereignty. You have a stone of Gaia. You have a magic blessing on chalk. Everyone just so durable right now. And this one goes out to maximum. He's got a lot of damage out here on the backside. <laughs> Initiation Whirlpool on the ground. Belch of the Gods coming out, but I-5 just can't find it. They don't really even uh, need to so much until the end game. If they get aggressive now, it could put them in a bad spot, but Lloydy is stuck in the Whirlpool. He's taking damage. He goes down. Superbia just not letting anything go. Advert pushed onto his heels as well. You're going to see the Thunderstrike come out. Torrent going to be good there, but unfortunately, he did not teleport far enough. Unfortunately, though, for Superbia, it doesn't look like they followed up on that stun that Bacchus was able to land. Lawbringer in the wrong direction. Curse you hiding behind the pillars as it looks like Superbia will back off here. They don't need to defend this siege minion at this point. Just healing themselves up and taking those kills away from that team fight is going to be enough. Team fights are so important. Under 100 tickets. We got 80 tickets left for I-5. 107 for Superbia. They're kind of, they're, they're keeping their chin high right now. They want to make sure that they're, uh, you know, Staying stable, staying safe, getting the minions. There's a whirlpool on the ground, and again, getting last hits on minions is huge. But I, I get, I want to kind of emphasize the fact that when it gets down to ten tickets, the big minions are the only ones that are worth. It's a single ticket. Right. So if no kills happen, you need to clear ten waves total to get the tickets down, or two kills. Of course, five tickets per kill. So it's a very delicate line. And the closer you get to ten tickets on the enemy team, the better you are. The patch, the path of flames get blocked there, forcing the comet. Like Bach is looking for a thug, but I'm not gonna find it. Two magic's blessing there for Superbia and I five getting popped immediately, looking for advert, but he's so durable. The stun from Sun Kong, the face me, the taunt comes out. Shibalong gate wants surges, but he's so tanky. The, uh, uh, Defender of Olympus coming from above. Who's going to find Lloydy? First damage cracking on the bottom. Lloydy goes down. There's the first. Odin jumping out. You're still alive. Tier 1's it. Can't find it. Forced out. Killing spree. Superbia. Sanitary from the back. Bali. Hail of arrows just to find the last bit of that kill. Wow. That is not an easy move to hit for max range. It's so small. It's very tiny. It is so small. Now, a lot of the abilities for Ur are actually pretty difficult to land. Of course, the bladed arrow, the hail of arrows. They're a little bit, you know, they're small and fast moving, but they have the range, so if you can get it, you can get it. Right now, I-5, they need to make use of the siege minion. If they don't get it in, they need to make sure they do enough damage where they get at least one kill from this fight. But check it out, Goshi already out of there. Xanachi's trying to throw some damage down here, but they're not finding the right potential. Take a look at the scoreboard right now. It's a, about 30 in either direction at this point. Honestly, what they need to do is they need to sit back. They need to force this under 10. If you give, if you give the fact that there's going to be seven uh, about seven minions left if they just wait this out. They, they can force this into a two-kill game. They don't have to fight oh. now. I-5 should be just going back to the base, saving their time, and just doing what they can. But look at this. Vec is not letting this one go. Ninja's down to one hit. They're not going to be able to stop this if they don't oh. find the kill, but they find it! One for one overall, but they have to be safe here again. I-5 can't afford to drop any more kills. 
That was a 1v4, 1v4 on either side. Sinatra in trouble. There's that title surge. Big burst from Shibble. Long K takes him down, and they need him down. Look at this, DM. 10 tickets to 50. The little minions are no longer worth any tickets for Suburbia. They're looking for those big minions. They need to get credit for every single one. There's one down to nine tickets. This is nine waves or two kills or four waves and a single kill for Superbia. I-5 is feeling the heat right now. They need to be very careful about how they step forward because it can all end in an instant. I-5 needs to be very, very cautious. They need to kind of just burn down the waves, get it closer to 10 tickets. At this point, Superbia, they should be blinking in. Look for just one kill. One kill will end this game at this point because that will put them... Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Lloyd is in a lot of trouble. He's Crack gone. It. They have two tickets remain. There's no reason to fight anymore. They should be backing and just looking for the opportunity to take down those big minions. At this point, I-5 cannot win if they play safe. They have to go in. They can force them into the worst position available, and right now it's going to get put down to one ticket. The next team fight is guaranteed to end this. They have to wipe them. One ticket. They have to fight now. They cannot sit back. They got to go. Sinatra knows what's up. They have to go in on this. They will not survive the next wave. They have to either defend the big minion now. They can't wait. They have to go. Look at this. They have to fight. Smart. They're going to take all the minions down now, push it as low as possible, but it got it down to 10. They need to get two kills before that minion goes down, and you can see right now, Superbia is not ready to let that they go. Want it. They're going to die they for want the minion. They want it. The, the blink. Do it. The Gil Bacchus sits on it. The Goomba stop to end the game. Superbia takes it. 10 tickets to zero, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we are in the round of 16 and not the preliminaries. They sat back in their base. They waited. They didn't even give I-5 an opportunity to get a single kill. They just sat back and said, you know what? You want to fight? Fine. Try and fight. We'll sit in our house. We'll lock the doors. When that big minion comes to knock on our door, we're going to jump on it. And Bacchus, with his belly button, takes it down. Look at the damage here. Now, of course, we're seeing a lot come out from Uller. I mean, 20,000 is a big deal, but we had 27k come out from Somugong. Mm -hmm. Nuts. Amazing. And, you know, that's just magic cudgel, like you said. Warrior's Will does do a mount, and of course, Animals does do a lot as well, but he's just able to hit, hit, hit. Has a lot of penetration, of course. He does have the Warrior Tabi uh, penetration on that. He did have the Jotun's Wrath as well, so combination goes there. And he also chin size. Even with the reduced chin size after the nerf, he's still able to do a lot after hitting. Uh, reduces, of course, the base damage now uh, down to a little bit. Actually, I'm sorry, it's 5% of maximum uh, HP is just, you know, like the old chin's blades, but at the same time, he's able to just continually dish out that damage. Besides, Sam is around to 13k, not as much, but he is a burst character, so he has kind of fit into intervals, and the rest of the time he's sitting back waiting for his opportunity. And, you know, I think a lot of credit goes to Gashi as well on Odin, who was able to force actives and abilities from every single uh, player on I-5, especially Ninja Demi. I'm pretty sure I saw him use his ultimate Lawbringer defensively just to get out of the ring more than he used it offensively. I'm really... I, I wonder what would have happened if they had one more ticket. If they had one more ticket on red team, if after that minion went down, or if that minion went down, they would have been at one instead of zero. Do you think they could have won the next fight? We saw a lot of stuff come out. We saw almost every single ultimate come out in the last uh, fight. But if you take a look at the red team, they have characters that don't need the ultimates as much. You don't really need Stormcall on Chalk. I mean, Thunderstrike does a lot. Torrent makes you very tanky. He has the healing rain. Then you have, you know, Confound coming out from Athena. You have... Ooh, by himself. <laughs> they need his ultimate, though. That's pretty crucial. <laughs> well, that's it for this game, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're curious about the sessions with the Smite Pros, the Pro Session Sweeps, sponsored by Alienware Arena, if you want to learn from Lassus, Lobster, Suntouch, Zatman, or, of course, Young Bay or Sayo, you definitely have the opportunity to do that. It is a sweep sweepstakes going on right now. We'll put that link up in chat for you if you want to jump in on that. So right there is the link. Check that out. We're going right into the next game. No breaks. It's all battle today. Are we, are we going in already? I believe we're going right in. I'm excited. We're ready to fight. This is arena. We don't, we don't take breaks. There's no, there's no cooler in the back of the arena. There might be. Have you, have you really played arena enough to know for a fact that there isn't one back there? I think I played it once. That's, that's the one with the sand and the obelisks, right? I, I'm so glad Domination's gone. Because, <laughs> you know, most of the people who play Domination now play Arena. And it makes the game mode, it makes the meta progress just a little right. bit faster. It splits the player base less, and I like that a lot. So, I do you really see the, did not like Domination. 
You see the different difference in our cameras right now? No. Why? Because you're the daytime arena and I'm the nighttime arena. <laughs> We're repping both sides. Now, of course, for those of you who don't know, you can randomly be uh, put into a nighttime version of Arena or a daytime version of Arena. And they're both awesome, but I like the variety. I think it's really cool. I really like the new map. Drybear and I actually got a chance to preview the current map, the one that we use mostly, when we were down in Atlanta in December. And that, I think, was one of my favorite parts. I couldn't believe the work they did to the game mode. It looks amazing. Oh, it's just visually becoming so immersive. I love how much work the artists put into it, and I think it's just really exciting to see it grow over time. I mean, can you remember? The, one of my fa most favorite things to do is go back to, uh, for those of you who are friends of Total Biscuit, uh, he does the WTF Is series, and you go back to the one he did for Smite, which is original for, like, Alpha, and the difference is just mind-blowing. This game has grown so much over our tenure here. I mean, I have been playing this game for a very long time, and the difference between... Even, you know, the, the start of closed beta, even the start of open beta and now are, are ridiculous. Op open beta? Didn't we, like, release or something? There was a big event, I swear. I swear that was a big event. No? The okay. Alienware Arena Cup. Oh, that's what we're doing right now, and we're into picks and bangs, ladies and gentlemen. Bassett's gone. Nobody likes cats. I'm surprised to see that they're just throwing her out immediately. No one's even taking a chance on her. I mean, you know what? Maybe I'm not surprised. She's, she's pretty OP. <laughs> Athena getting banned out as well, uh, which is probably smart. I mean, he did a lot of work last time. I would like to see a ban of Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong available. He did a lot of damage last game. It's going to be silly yet again, not swapping it up at all this time around. Surprisingly enough, it's back over to I-5 to see what they want to ban out. Will it be Sun Wukong? You don't want to give it back over to Vega to see what he can do with it. Uh, it actually ran a lot of interference there, but of course had the ultimate to get out if he needed to. Tier, do you think they'll go for Tier again? Fear does a lot of work. I mean, the Blink Fearless is a constant threat in the game mode. He can do it every 45 seconds. Blink Fearless is basically an ultimate for all intents and purposes, and it's a 45-second cooldown on that Blink. Not to mention the Fearless is going to be up every so often. Shibalanke going to get banned, and I like that. That's very smart. In my opinion, one of the top three in the game mode, but Zeus is open. Zeus is available. Now, of course, he's a character all on his own. He's great in Arena. He's not a character that can do 100 to 0 until late, late game. He's just like 100 to about 20%, and then someone finishes him off. The Dentney does a lot, though, and of course, the ultimate is a big combo-based ability. You can use Cupid's ultimate for the cripple. You can use the trap for Odin. That's the, the iconic one that's always been seen. Zeus hovered on here. Could this be a premonition from DM? Will they lock it in? They did so much last game. Odin is on the table, so will they steal it away? Will actually, you know, what they, I feel like they have to. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't yeah. put the two together. It's just not a good idea. Ring of Spears plus Lightning Storm is pretty much automatic death. On the right side, it's going to be an auto lock of Freya, auto lock of Odin, and I respect both of those picks. Very smart. Freya is so strong, even after the adjustments she's had over time, and you know, had the damage reduced, and it's been small. Radiate was nerfed a little bit uh, about two and a half months ago, and you know, single target damage from Freya is just absolutely bonkers. Those gumballs coming out doing so much ridiculous damage that you have to respect her, and the fact that she's able to fly up in the air, Valkyrie's discretion keeps her safe uh, if she needs to disengage. It's also important there. They're gonna get Sanu Kong, but they got Zeus and Chunga as well. We haven't really seen a healer so far. Chunga, actually one of the most important picks in the general arena meta, um, one of the characters that is picked and banned consistently, though it should be note that she was secretly nerfed in the last patch. You can no longer swing the one hitbox, as the one hitbox is uh, similar to, um, I guess, most other moves in the game now, where it kind of takes a picture of where the move should be, and while it, it will show you swinging the hitbox, it will not apply the damage. Um, so... Please beware of that, everyone out there. She has been changed, and it's a change that I'm very sad about because I love that. That's my favorite. Yeah, swinging it almost in like a 180 degree arc. I and just love it. Slicing everyone in Have you ever bits. seen the video where I get killed by the 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 hippos? arachne pole? The yes. arachne pole? Yes. Oh my god. It, it, may, it may, I slept well that night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I I could I could pull her right now. I'll just pull her. And I pulled her and the hitbox, Slice! and it just killed me. <laughs> and I just stared at the screen for like 45 seconds. Across the way, we're going to see Urin and Poseidon picked Ooh. up as well. Superb. Isn't that, isn't that fun to say? No. It took me forever to learn it. I learned I, it from Trickstank and Trickstank's brother. I've been, I stopped watching Vikings in Season 2. I, I'm just not into <laughs> it. 
Stop. <laughs> so the left side of the screen, Superbia has two choices to make here. What are they going to go with? Looks like it's going to be Sun Wukong uh, as well as Guan Yu. They actually did not lock in Sun Wukong before Bacchus was selected in place. So it looks like they've got a pretty similar lineup than they had before, but they're going to be subbing in Guan Yu, Chunga, and Zeus here, uh, but the same kind of archetypes. So in the last game, we saw a pretty similar team coming out from I-5. You know, the Poseidon, Odin, Uller picks. Freya this time in, in change of where I think was Chalk. And then actually, I guess Kuma Karna is going to be there instead of Chalk. Freya instead of Agni. Uh, that's a lot of magic damage this time. I definitely want to see an early Void Stone coming out from somebody. Yeah, I'm surprised that Kamakarna made it this far uh, without being picked at all. I mean, he's so very strong, uh, and so he's going to be locking in for that final pick here. I-5 versus Superbia, Game 2. Superbia did win Game 1, so keep that in mind. That is something that we really have to keep in mind as we go into the next one, because if Superbia wins this, they win this series. So I-5 is kind of on the chopping block here. They have to step up to the plate. They have to find a strategy that slows down Superbia, and I think, you know, and I feel like there should be some kind of welcome mat or poster as you walk into the arena. Is just kill minions. Just do it. Stop Stop trying to kill people. And people look at it as a team deathmatch type strategy, but really the minions are the core of it. The tickets. All you need is tickets. If you died 0 to 10 and you got all the tickets, you win. That's all it. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, the score is what matters. Player damage, you know, damage mitigated, healing done, player kills, player deaths, player assists are all means to an end. You have to focus on the game type. You have to learn the meta. And both of these teams know that tickets are going to win games. That's exactly why we saw Superbia win the last game. I-5 almost made a comeback, but going into game two, you know, this is going to be a fresh start. Yeah, it certainly is. So we're going to cut to a brief break as we go into round or game two of round one. Superbia versus I-5. Superbia is up one game. If they win this, they take it all. All eyes are on I-5. And if you have five of them, they're all there. Stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to game two of today's round one matchup. Superbia versus I-5 is underway. Do we see a ward? We see a ward. He's going to ward it again. Uh, I like do this. It. I like this ward. I mean, I don't think I've ever really seen anyone do this before. And he just walks over, puts a war down. It doesn't really give them any information that they don't already have. I mean, you know that they're going to do the buffs. <laughs> <laughs> also, do, have you ever noticed that both teams are always willing to go left out of their base? It's always go left because you want to get the farthest speed buff because speed is obviously way more important to blue. So right off the bat, they are going to pull the speed in the red. And they're going to oh, God, Zeus damage. It's amazing. Oh Both buffs down, Lord. left side, right side. A little bit later, damage is going to fall down down uh, there as well. Blue buff picked up. Movement speed and taken out by Kumba Karna here. And we're going to see the big sleeping giant in action. Now look for the combo here. Now we do have Odin ultimate. The biggest thing about Odin's ultimate is it can be helpful or it could be disastrous. For those of you who saw yeah. my uh, my story of Spear on YouTube of the troll, it can be very detrimental to your team if used improperly. And of course, Zeus can't take advantage of it. That's right. If, I mean, he does give his allies protections if they're in there, but if you lock in someone like Chung'a or Guan Yu who can't get out, and then a Zeus ult comes down, like, that could be really, really bad. I mean, granted, that's not going to happen because all those people are on the same team. In this specific instance, I don't know how I managed to pick those guys out of nowhere and they're all on the same team. But at the same time, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, things like, you know, uh, Poseidon can't get out of that thing. Kumba Karna can't get out of that thing. They're going to have to buy Combat Blink to get out of their own ultimates. Zeus has to take advantage of that. Freya has to use the ultimate as well to get out if she's going to get out of it as all. Well. I like the fact that Advert went straight into Heavenly Agility to start. This is a big, big pickup. Now, I would like to see it actually on the left side for Chunga again, that extra heal uh, initiation. I mean, they have Chunga, Guan Yu, and you don't rush Heavenly Agility. I'm a little oh, confused. speaking of Heavenly Agility. Oh, he caught three! And there goes the Kraken Seas. Gets taken down. The Lightning Storm's not going to do the damage that he wanted, but Waxy Moon's going to hit too. Oh. I-5 now getting turned on as Ninja Demi goes up into the air. They're going to get some damage out of Valkyrie's discretion, but it's not going to be enough as he goes down. My god, the healing is insane here. Just a little bit from Chunga so far. Guan Yu, that'll be the conviction. Down on the ground, one, two, three. Durgis goes down as well. Double kill for Guan Yu. I-5 initiated there. Yeah. They were the ones that started that, but the fall from Suburbia was, can I say it, superb? I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> it's done. It's done. <laughs> I really didn't like how committed they were to that fight. They should have taken that kill and walked back to the base with their gold. But instead, I mean, right there, Dergius just went way too far out of position. I mean, you're Kumbakarna. You can take a beating, but eventually you're going to go to sleep. 
And this this arena is not the ideal location for a nap. Yeah, that's true. Now it does buy some time, and if it's during a team fight, it's going to be helpful in the fact that you know they have to focus on him or someone else. There's be other things going on, but at the same time, you know, if he's out by himself like he was prior, they're just going to sit on him, hit him a bunch of times, and he will go down there. There's the minion pump shooting out, uh, looking for the follow up one, two, three. Charge detonating on Dirty, just dropping low. The dash from Warriors will will drop him low as well. The combination here is huge, and I would like to see a little bit more healing coming out from Guan Yu and Chang'e. I like this one minion just hanging around left. Really, we're not seeing too big of a disparity between the two teams. Despite there being a two kill difference uh, for Superbia, there's actually only a three ticket difference. We're in the exact same spot we were last time, but the tables have been turned. Yeah, and it was a slow ascent there. Initiation Bacchus on Toxic there Cave, Belly and Flop, Belch of the Gods coming out, Guan Yu coming in, a Poseidon has nowhere to go, Crack comes out, just barely doing damage to Bacchus there, inside the ring, Zeus by himself, forced to watch his team go down and ruin Freya up in the air, the Slice comes through, finishing him off, Guan Yu goes down as well, it's a two for one exchange in favor of Superbia as Bacchus jumps out in celebration, but the tickets, they're slowly going towards Superbia. There's a six ticket window right here that they can earn for themselves and they need to get that done as soon as possible. They're looking actually, they're going to do last hits. Check this out. They're going to try to just do last hits and get rid of some of the enemy tickets. And that's a very, very smart push here as you see them starting to group up. Three tickets have already been wasted and they haven't missed a last hit in this engagement yet. So great play right there coming out from my five. The menu wave is so important. Actually, clear the tickets out pretty quickly here. Now, there's a lot of tickets on the board. Looks like it's going to be about nine. They get the last hits there. I-5 coming through. Jingle bang. There's his slice as well. One more shot. They actually missed the big minion. So it's a 427 to 414. Should be just about a three or four ticket game as these menu waves are cleared out here. Yeah, there we go. About five tickets on top. The buff minions are respawning. It's so important to get these. Look at that. That was at the respawn timer. Like, this is where you should be at the four-minute mark, getting ready to pick these buffs up. If you lose one or two tickets, that's generally okay because a speed buff or a red buff can mean the world in a team fight. 20% extra magical power, especially on a character like Zeus, that's a big deal. And we haven't really seen Kumba Karna utilize his ultimate a lot here. Now, you can do it with uh, Kraken. Anything that has a bit of a delay on it, Alguang ultimate, crushing wave from Habwa. Uh, of course, I'm a monster from Scylla. Great combos there. But, you know, Ooh, if you fall down combos. into a Kraken there, yeah, it didn't slow down by effort. I really like that a lot. I mean, he was able to get out of there just barely, but it had one more person rotated over. Just proper CC chains is really putting Superbia slow. Actually, I shouldn't say really. They're only four tickets ahead wave to wave right now. If they don't miss anything here, we have a four ticket game. That's a one kill game, despite there being a three kill disparity. Very, very small amount. It could start uh -oh. to spread out here over when the banish comes through. There goes the, actually the bird form from the Dark Lord Sun Wukong to get back to the base. Belly flop left side, the blue buff will go to Bacchus here to keep his drunk state up. You want to be as drunk as possible, I guess. <laughs> Not me. Not a big fan. Oh, I hate Bacchus. Oh, up oh. into the air! He's Crack gonna it. land into there the There it is! You just said it! How did you do there it? There it is! You're from that's, the future. That's what I was waiting for. I wanted to see it. <laughs> But that's the combo potential. I mean, they just drop into certain death and taking Zeus out of the fight. That's going to be big for them. Granted, he has already respawned thanks to wave respawns. Uh, shout out to shooters, by the way. <laughs> Want to give a shout out to like Unreal Tournament right now. <laughs> oh, we run man. on the Unreal Engine. We're brothers. Ah, that's true. That's I very true. We, it, wait, we do run on the Unreal Engine, right? I didn't just make that up. Yes, yes we do. Okay, good. All right. You would but think I would know the these page. things. No, no, no. What, what game are we playing? Oh, <laughs> Seize takes a huge minion right to the face. He'll get healed up there from uh, some of that Moonflower dance, but you can see he did take a pretty big chunk of his life there from Thergius. So two tickets across the board here. I-5 and a slight latest of minion waves are meeting up here. We're going to see the Sovereignty finally finish on Kamba Karna across the way. We don't see that just yet. Uh, Box is a little delayed on his and for Blink instead here. Initiation looking for us an entry on Odin in the backside. Bach is forced out here. Odin's gonna try and trap as many as he can. Maybe no, it backs off there. The sleep comes through. Guan Yu's up on the horse. Cavalry charge looking for Ur. Not gonna find it there. It follows up on Kamakarna. He's very tanky though. Whirlpool coming out quite shortly. Poseidon has no ultimate available. Durgius does though if he wants to punt someone up. Advert going deep, surrounded in an ocean of blue. Wants to fight Zeus. Can't go for it. Gonna disengage completely. Freya will go down as Chunga jumps in deep. But now we have Guan Yu dash out inside the rings. He's gonna be Odin. He doesn't have the jump available. Up in the air is the Kong. Funky Flockus gets the kill. He goes down. I'm actually pretty surprised to see that Seize left that fight so early. He really could have baited Zeus into an earlier kill there. But I, I you know, maybe not giving up the kill could have been a smart idea, but he really. Oh! Kumba Karna! Yeah. See that? Yeah. 
Jesus! Yeah, it, it hurts a lot. For those of you who don't know, there is a bit of an issue with the punt. Him. The punt can hit multiple times in rare occasions, so keep that in mind. But we're just going to kind of ignore that for now. Uh, it, it does happen, and it, it, it happened right there. And so it's, felt, it's similar felt the pain. for those of you who are veterans of the game to how the old Celestial Beam worked for Ra, how it was made of multiple hitboxes. And if you're walking in that path, then you can get hit by multiple hits of those hitboxes. So you have to be careful at the way you're running away from those minions. The only issue is that it's lightning fast, and it's kind of hard to dodge to begin with, as sees, uh, I think, will have that burned into his memory for next time. Yeah, he's going to feel it. And, of course, the punt, it doesn't happen every time, and can be the overlap of the zones is very important to pay attention to. Chain landing coming out, going to hit Odin as well as Kamba. Karna is slow. There goes the sleep on Sinukar. Now, keep in mind, if the sleep is broken, unlike Apollo's Mesmerize, it does apply a smooth bit slow. So that's important to keep in mind. Cavalry charge looking for Odin. He's going to buy some CC immunity for himself. Lunge is not available, though. He needs a three-charge dead and looking for it. The crack comes out. Chunga ultimate. The waxy moon gets the kills. Advert goes down. Up into the air. Do they have a follow-up? No follow up there, but they're going to get the damage out. Will it be enough? Whirlpool, Freya, one, two, three. There he goes. That was a smart play there. You see the Groggy Strike just used. Uh, I mean, it's definitely my opinion that Groggy Strike is one of the weaker moves in the game right now. It's low damage. It's hard to it's hard to catch. And generally, Kumba Karn is not going to be a very quick character. You can outrange him pretty quickly. And it's a very long startup. 2.5 seconds, I think? It, yeah, about 2. Uh, no, it's 1.5, I believe. No, because you can't hit it off the off the launch. You don't even, like, get close. It's really, really long. I don't know the exact time, but it's it's slow. But right there, he covered his option. He knocked him up to the air, he started it early, and he started running towards the, the base to ensure that if he does walk in this direction, he gets hit by the Kuragi Strike. If he walks away from me and doesn't want to take the route, he's going to walk into three of my teammates. And that is why I think everyone should be on the Reddit after tournaments every week talking to Durgius and his AMAs because the guy has a lot of smite information, a lot of smite knowledge, and you should be using that to your advantage. Tool tip says 1.5 seconds, but they may be a little bit off there. So no calling in trouble. One more I shot. We'll do route. it. The root, yes. I'm talking about the charge up time to actually swing it. Mm. It's a long time. But right there, up into the air again. C's going to use his ultimate here. Lightning Storm inside the Ring of Spears, kind of forming a Venn diagram. Oh. Kraken's going to hit three on the outside and not really do enough as Zeus will be able to escape here. Look at the Mesmerize. Whirlpool on the ground, slowing him down there. That Mesmerize is a lot of work. Magic's Blessing on Durge is going to allow him to get in and out very quickly, of course, using his passive to stay alive. Jingo Bang in the mid lane. There goes Initiation Box. Getting intoxicated, looking for Udo. Not going to find it. The Sleep is not going to land. There's the Root. Going to find Bogus. Whirlpool going to pull him closer. Good heal from Chunga, though. Fist the Gods from Kumba. Karna actually going to root him in place there, getting that extra stun. Try and CC Chain. I like the, I like the Fist, actually. I like it on Kumba Karna. It actually kind of... Bridge the gap between his long durations. Check out the score right now, Mr. Bear. They're going to clear this wave up. We are actually a one-ticket game right now, despite there being a four-kill disparity, and it's not even in that team's favor. And you should be noted, everyone's level 14 right now. The gold right. is actually slightly in favor, thanks to the kill of uh, Superbia. But overall, the game, for all intents and purposes, is dead even. There's the root coming out. Gonna find Sinokon. Pause purification beats. It goes right into bird form. The sleep up into the air. Do we have a Kraken? We do not have it right now. Whirlpool is on cooldown as well. Udo doing work here. The Aegis Shield comes up and the lunge is gonna land on top of Season. He will go down. Looking for Freya. Towel Assault. The slice comes out. Freya goes down. There goes the weakening curse. Come out from Durgis to slow them out as they try to follow up. But I-5, they go in for the kill. They get followed up on. It's a one for one. Yeah, I mean, they were able to find two people right there and we still are at a one ticket game. Strangely enough, and check out check out my man Sanitary right now and Lloydie. They have low health, but they move up to clear the wave and then they're gonna go back, guys. You don't always have to go back. Always make sure that when you decide you're gonna go back, it's at a position where you're not gonna lose tickets. You always wanna make sure that the people against you aren't in a position where they can pressure your base. And that's a big deal. Right there, the entire team was able to go back and spend money. Lloydie actually spending about 10 seconds to the base to gain enough money to buy the next level of his item. Very smart as well but they don't lose anything for it because they were able to clear the wave. Now Blinken, Intoxicate, they're not gonna get the stun there, but they will get it from the cavalry charge. Goshi will find a kill as well. Ooh, double Waxing hit! Moon! 
Waxy Moon, huge there. Odin trying to go back to the well. That was a huge hit. Three oh. for O. Oh. They got the creeps. They're going to go into... I don't think we've seen that. So, nope, they're going to oh. save it. Oh, oh, oh. Kamakar taking damage. Whirlpool on the ground. They're going to slay the crack. He's going to do minimal damage here to Bacchus. Sinokong Kong up in the air. He's going to be just fine. Bacchus will disengage as well. They got the Siege Minion. Can they defend this here? If Bacchus just wants to stand next to it, they can push it all the way in. For those of you who don't know, the Siege Minion or the Siege Tower will stop if there's enemies in the way. But if you have an ally nearby, it will continue on. They, they did not even care about trying to get that thing in. They're like, we have a pretty decent lead, 13 tickets right now. Let's just let that go. We'll use the Siege Minion as an opportunity for us to go back. The buffs are about to respawn, as you can see on either side of the minimap. The timers are ticking down, and of course, we already have the red buff on the left side, which we'll probably see a rotation to right now. They want to make sure they're in time for these things, and that's a smart play. Take the safe play. Tonga is oh, 7 -0 -3. Can we talk about how awesome the Dark Lord skin is? He's also uh, 0 0011. I mean, fun. Like, what are you going to do to him? You're going to kill Hukar? We don't, we don't really see a whole lot of skins like that, right? Where it just changes everything about the character. And honestly, even right. the abilities are a little bit different. Uh, kind of has like can, the you tell the, push can you tell the, the, the animals up. apart? Yes, but after a while, it took me time. I, I, I could do it. TV said the other day he didn't know how to do it. Mm. The bird is like a bird. He makes like a bird uh, thing. Yeah. And the ox is a little push spin. Right, and then the, the tiger the looks like he's going to grab one person. Yeah. Yeah. Groggy Strike going to hit two into the air. They go, knocking back someone else. Sees constantly being bombarded. They will not leave Zeus alone. Not to say that's a bad strategy. Like, you definitely don't want to leave him to his devices. I like the fact that Durgis is using his epic uppercut more often on cooldown. Now, of course, he doesn't have uh, full CDR, but he does have the Shoes of the mat, uh, shoes of Focus here. 50% cooldown reduction. Just use it more often. And it's such a great combo-based ability. It's going to do a lot of damage. Of course, it does damage when they land. They're in the air for 2.2 seconds. They have a lot of area damage. Of course, the cooldown's only a minute. This just comes out. Zeus Ultimate on the ground looking for Poseidon. The speed's going to be a little bit too much, though. Towel Assault on Fresh. She's dropping low. Double banish there. As she single banish on Guan Yu, forcing them to disengage. Odin gets back to the well as well, surprisingly enough, Supreme gets nothing. Yet still about 13 tickets in the lead, actually 14 tickets in the lead. They weren't able to get that last hit on the minion very close to their base. As you see people starting to move up here, I-5 trying to look for something. You're seeing them trying to just turn the creeps uh, towards their creeps to ensure that they're going to lose some tickets here, but it's not going to happen as Sun Wukong works his way back in and throws that Jingu Bang to the ground to ensure that he gets the damage done. Also, the gods going to send out Odin. Not really the greatest target to start on, though. We do have Chin Size done on Ur. Oh, the root on Zeus. Nowhere to follow up here. Whirlpool a little bit too far away. There goes the bird form coming out from Sun Wukong, disengaging completely. Three mad. There's the epic uppercut. Whirlpool cracking coming out. Seize goes down. Zeus gets comboed immediately. There's the cavalry charge looking for Frey up in there to avoid a great play there. Slowing him down there. The bombs are coming up from above. The fight continues on here. Ninja Demi is going to just run out of this, but I think the Belch is going to find him. One good hit. Yeah, there it is. Crescent Moon Dance from the back is going to slay him as we do see a respawn. But at the same time, both teams are in a pretty awful position right now with low health, low mana, and the creep waves moving up. You see Zergius moving forward here, but he's not going to be able to defend against four. Nice use of Mesmerize there is going to find something. They're getting some damage on Sun Wukong. He's using Vs. Does he have enough to get out of there if he needs to? He actually might not even have to. But you see him oh, using the last bit of his mana for the Jingu Bang, and his pressure will be gone as he is forced back to the base with no mana resource available. Pervia one game up in this series. This is game two. They're still in the ticket advantage, about 12 tickets in their favor. If they win this game, they win the series, and they move on to the round of eight. I-5 is feeling the pressure right now. They do not want to give this up here in a 2-0 series. A toxic coming on Freya. Does she have a way to get out here? She doesn't have the test. The detonate comes through. The Waxy Moon is wasted there as Odin jumps out. The three-charge detonate is available. Will it go down? And Odin's going to fall off. Chain Lightning coming out here. Detonate lands on top. The sun comes through. Kamba Karna getting low. No distance on that one, though, as Odin gets knocked Knocked up into the air, they can't follow up. He's back into the well. Freya looking for Changa, but doesn't have the distance. Yeah, she was not going to be able to chase that one into four other people. I mean, if she managed to get that kill and trade it, it would have been one thing. But giving that up at this point, especially chasing a character with insane movement like Changa, not to mention healing, it just wasn't. Uh, it was just ill-conceived from the start, which is why you saw him back off. In the back side here, we're seeing Goshi getting pushed out as well as they're trying to delay some of these ticket gains. 18 tickets right now with a few disparities in, in terms of uh, where the minions lie at the moment. It still looks like we have a pretty major lead in favor of Superbia. Oh, there's a sleep on Goshi, forcing back 
Odin in the backside gonna fall up here looking for Sunukong. There's a hail of arrows, but like we mentioned, it's a little difficult to land. It's a small, small area of effect, and a little bit fast on the animation as well. So uh, challenging to hit there. Whirlpool gonna slow them out. Intoxicate Bach is forcing them up. The epic uppercut in the back is gonna force Zeus to disengage for a little bit longer. There goes the kill. Divine coming out from Curse You. 904 has yet to die this match. I5 is feeling the heat. 119, 118 now to 143. And Superbia has a good system going. They have Bach is forced to fight. Kamba Karna can't do much. Odin sits back so they can't initiate on him, and then they get the kill and they back off immediately. Look at her build. Talking about Chunna right now. We have full CDR with her first two items, then extra damage and penetration for her team on Voidstone, and that's going to affect not only Goshi, but it's also going to affect Seize. Actually, he has opted for a Voidstone as well, so they can be separate and still gain those passives, both of whom have opted for Rod of Tahuti for the increased magical power, and now she's into Asclepius. Not only is that going to increase her healing, which can be very helpful in team fights, but that's another 10% movement speed on top of the 25% movement speed that she gains from just using her abilities. Right now, given the fact that she's 904 and level 20, the highest level in the game, there really isn't much you can do to contend with Javel. For a pull, Sunukong going up with the air, and as you mentioned, a lot of healing, 10,000 healing done by Chunga so far, and just about 5k coming out from Guan Yu. The Waxing Moon hits beside in the back, and it was a huge swing for Superbia as they force this forward, looking for Durgius, and now Odin doesn't have a jump available, needs to get some way out of here. Belly flop, detonate, strike comes down, the lightning is swift, and he goes down on the backside. It's now going to be I-5 versus Superbia, slowing down a bit. The minions are becoming more and more important, but I feel like we're just watching a repeat. It's just initiation for Bacchus, they get a kill, they run away. Initiation for Bacchus, they get a kill, they run away. That's all you have to do. You don't have to wipe them. There isn't a fire giant or a phoenix that you have to burn down. You're in... you see that? Wow. Did you see the reaction time coming out from Chang'e right there to dodge the axe toss? Just that... It's a amazing. very fast move. It is not an easy thing to dodge. And to be able to do that as quickly as she did is very impressive. But it looks like at this point we have a 28 ticket game. Uh, both teams trying to do their best here, but Superbia just has the edge. Blink in intoxicate is going to drunk out too. As the Ninja Team, he's going to be forced into Valkyrie's describe. He did not get up in time. Every did time. Did he have it? Every time. Oh, oh, it, well, it's there. I don't know if he had it during the fight there, but he got burned down pretty quickly, and that's going to be a major detriment right now uh, to I-5. They were canceling the animation. It was the brief upstart, and every single time the belly flop, and of course the slow, and then the push. I think it was the title surge actually, uh, or I'm sorry, I think it was the actual little hit from the belly flop that forced him to disengage. And then after that, he just couldn't get the ultimate primed in time. So he's going to go down there with the ultimate available. But it seems like their formula is working. They just go in, they blink, intoxicate, belt to the gods, and that's it. Three man charge up here from Odin. There's no follow up to be seen. Looking for Lloyd. He's got a whirlpool, Kraken, going to hit Zeus. He's got purification beats though. Magic's busting as well. Cumber Carter comes through here. Sun Kong in trouble, looking for Lloydy. Lloydy goes down in response here, surprisingly enough. Belcher's guy's coming out, looking for Frey as well. They have the focus, the Intoxicate comes out. Oh, in the back, Waxy Moon will hit two, and again, take down another Immortal. player. She is 11-0-8. We also have Vec right now at 1-0-19. He has been a part of 20 of the 21 kills that they wow. have earned on Superbia. Wow, absolutely amazing. Looking for another, the 20 second might be coming out here. Looking for Lloydy, Belch of the Gods, Zeus ultimate, one more tick, huge hit from Sun Wukong. We talked about it, why they didn't ban it in the picking stage. Freya wants it, one, two, no! It the goes in, minion. the Siege Minion takes it down! I've never seen one get into the portal! Wow. I've never seen that. And you know, here's the thing, here's the thing. You have to stay focused in arena. I feel like there are teams that are unprepared to enter the arena. Freya was trying to kill Sendo Kong, and Sendo Kong wasn't reacting. He's like, hey, come on, come on, come attack me, come on. I'm about to die, I'm about to die. You got me, you got me. You totally got me. See you later, Siege. See you later. And then it was done. That's all you needed. And that's the biggest thing about arena. It's not about the kills. It's about the kills in a marginal aspect, but the Siege minions, the minions, the big minions, the buff minions, they're all the most important part of arena. And sometimes when you lose sight of that, you lose. I've never seen one of them. Uh, do you need a moment? So excited. Do you want like a, like a muffin basket or something What's to celebrate? What's crazy is not only is that 10 points, but that's the most important 10 points. That's the 10 points you can't earn from minions anymore. That's the 10 right. points that you have to struggle to get kills or whittle down big minions over the course of like six minutes. That was a huge, huge, huge engagement, and it's going to cl clean the setup.
So, of course, uh, we're moving on. And, of course, there's a 2-0 victory for Superbia. They closed out this match very strong. So, I-5 is going to hang their heads low and step away for this tournament match. Of course, this is a two-week series, so they will be unab unable to compete next week as well. So, that's going to be out of it. As far as the rest of the bracket goes, we have two more games or had two more matches lined up. Dig versus Cog coming up next. But, unfortunately enough, D2F is going to step out here. They had two players that had to go work, so unfortunately they have to forfeit uh, before their match starts. So we have one more match to go, but yeah, if we have to close out the day, why not yeah. close it out with Team Dignitas versus Cognitive Gaming? So, Dig, obviously a huge name. Second place at the launch tournament. Uh, second place, or second seed NA going into the launch tournament and has probably the most land wins of any team in the world. They're going to be going up against Cognitive Gaming, undefeated throughout the qualifiers, uh, third place overall at the launch tournament, and one of the strongest teams in the entire world. It should also be noted that the winner of this next week will be going up against Snipe, who was the winner of the last major arena tournament that we had. Yeah, Arena seems to be such a different animal, and some teams translate well into it, and some teams don't, and Snipe, of course, has proven themselves as a team that does. So we're going to be taking a brief break and coming back with Team Dignitas up against Cognitive Gaming. Stick around. You do not want to miss this. Now, I know you're what you're thinking. It's Arena. Why should I watch? My answer is it's Arena. You definitely should watch. This is where it's going to come down to the individual plays. Now, of course, Conquest, it's all about you know getting the map control, getting the objectives, but in Arena... It's just man versus man, woman versus woman, God versus God. This is it. So you gotta you gotta watch this. Stick around. We'll be right back. 